Hello and welcome to this look at adding icons in map images to a worldographer. I'm the creator of the program, Joe Wetzel. And uh, what you see in front of you is just a blank map um, that we got started with for setting this up. We're in version 1.23 of worldographer. If you ever see update available up here, then that's a good reminder that um, we do actually put up updates um, probably every month or so and uh, it's always good to be moving to the latest version because we're always making fixes and adding some new features so if i want to add uh add the images to worldographer there's three types of images that i would want to add one type would be terrain this is also your floor tiles for a battle mat for example um, another type is your features which are things like city icons on a world map or castle icons on a world map it could be your buildings for a settlement map, and it could be your stairways and your beds and doors and so forth for a battle map. And the third type is textures, where you would have a fill pattern for, um, for example, if you wanted to have an ocean that had some texture to it on a world map, you could you could do so that way. Um, you could also use it as the background or the, the, the texture of roads for your um, settlement map. And for your um, battle mat, you could use it as uh, the, the fill, uh, uh, the texture fill area could be the floor and then the, uh, the stroke uh, of any polygon that you place could be the uh, wall. So you can set those up with textures and, and instead of just uh, solid colors. So uh, let's get to uh, the first way to do this is to use the add custom terrain features or textures uh, options here. We're going to start with terrain and I have a folder with a couple of sample icons here. And I can pick this Feywild floor A as a new type of floor pattern that I want to put on this map. It's going to ask me uh, for each of the, the types that I'm adding. So if we selected several icons, then it would uh, give us several rows here. And so this is, since this is a floor, I'm going to classify it as a floor. Now, since it's got floor already in the name, it would already be filtered by floor uh, on our terrain drawers, uh, drop down to, to filter, uh, which you'll see in a moment. But uh, I'm going to add floor anyway. So I hit OK. And it tells me that one new thing was added. And I go into terrain here. <clears throat> and if I filter by floor, you can see that there's still quite a few different types of floors here. And I can then also, if I wanted to narrow it down to just that one that we had, since we had Faye in the name, we can get it this way. Place it on the map. Uh, uh oh, so it's not spanning the entire width. Well, that's because uh, we didn't configure it to do so. What we can do if we want to configure it to do so is go to the configure window, and this asks us which type of terrain are we trying to edit. Hit floor, okay. Um, and then it gives us all of the floor types in the tool. I can actually then come down, probably missed it already, Feywild floor A. And it's got a gray background by default because we didn't specify it and we'll get to, to how to specify that uh, automatically in in a different way of adding the icons to the tool but but by default uh, it's going to um, to show up as gray here we can change the image here's where we can change the width uh, of that icon how it uh, how it sizes compared to the uh, to the tiles size so if we want it to be a hundred percent we can set it to 100%. We can set the elevation to 1 because for a floor tile it doesn't really matter. These other ones were also defaults, which is why those are 1,000 as well. Um, and so they they didn't um, they didn't have any spe uh, settings specified. If you do want to specify those, you can do so in the file name, and we'll get to that um, a little bit later. But for um, for now, if you want to manually reconfigure them, you can do it here. Hit apply, close. Now, any new terrain that I add will have the new settings. So you can see now it does take up the entire width of, of a square. If I want to overwrite the previous one, uh, because of some optimizations in the tool uh, in Worldographer, we have to first set it to something else, and then we can overwrite what was there. 
the second thing that I'm that that that, that will sh show is um, uh, configuring or adding custom features is the same same process. Here we can bring up this dialog, and then it's going to well, we can pick one of these tokens, for example. So we have a token for a character in our game group, and select that. Um, here it's going to ask us how do you want to classify this and there are a few more options for different categories of images in this case uh, it's a token so we'll, we'll, we'll pick token from the list hit OK we get told that we added one if we go down to features now <clears throat> and I can filter by tokens and if I we have a number of tokens built into the tool now, um, but I can filter also by name and I can get the, the one that we've got and that I can select and move around. Um, and then the third thing that we can do is we can add custom textures, which is going to bring up a dialogue as well. Um, the second way to add the images into the tool is with these configure options, configure terrain, features, and textures. We already saw the configure terrain uh, dialog a moment ago, so I'm going to go to configure features. And here it's asking us which type of uh, features do you want to configure. Since we're dealing with a battle mat, I'm going to pick battle mat, continue. Then it brings up a, a list of all the different uh, battle mat features into the tool. Uh, the built-in icons have a simple version of the icon in addition to the um, richer, fully painted art style icon that, 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 that is the default. And you can toggle between these for your maps in case if you wanted to have a printer for a printer friendly version of your map on the uh, tools or options drawer. I think it's on the options drawer where you can set, set it to use the simpler uh, art. <clears throat> So if I want to add a new uh, icon, we hit add row, scroll down to the bottom, and then choose a file. And so in this case here, I don't really have any good uh, icon in mind for an additional feature. So I'm just going to pick this random uh, coat of arms graphic here. Hit OK. And I'll just do battle map so it cl gets classified properly. Um, COA and here you can size it uh, so again we're going to get uh, the, the, during the, the third the discussion of the third way to add the icons we'll talk a little bit about how to automatically get it to size properly for you um, but uh, by default here this way it's set to 85 and 85 um, we can also choose a file for the alternate icon hit apply close and then if I go into battle mat here and COA, we can see here we have some other graphic as well, um, but that's another way to have a feature added into the tool. And you can, you know, in these examples, I've only been selecting one file, but you can select several and, and more easily uh, add several at the same time. Um, and then uh, let me show configure feet uh, configure textures for this dialog. Um, in Worldographer's case, I should point out, by default, the, the data model handles each tile, um, hex, square, whatever, as 300 pixels across internally. Um, so if you want things to repeat nicely, particularly for battle mats, you would use 300 for these widths. Uh, you might have to play with that a little bit because of some edging. You might have to pick 298, 299. But for the isometric icons, uh, if you want a texture to match up with the isometric icons that we have, we use 174. That's because of the squished perspective of the uh, of the icons uh, in the isometric style. Um, but we also use 1500 sometimes. This is a texture that that's designed to span across several um, uh, several hexes, so that the pattern doesn't appear to repeat too quickly. And um, in the case of these two, those are ones that are added uh, already into the tool with the third method. Um, but uh, some of those, uh, some of the others that are 1500 are built into the tool now, things that we've added in the past couple of months, actually. Um, and so, yeah, you can just go to add row, pick it, uh, enter in the new one um, and the size setting that you want. Uh, use the file chooser to pick the, pick the image. 
So that's the second way to add, uh, add artwork into Worldographer. The, the third way is uh, going to the configuration folder. And this is designed to be the easiest way, but it does take a, a bit of setup to get it just right. But then once you've done it, you don't have to have to do anything else. So once you've done it for a set of icons and it's, it's set, it's taken care of. So you go to show configuration folder. This is a folder on your computer that you need to create. Um, usually you'll have, this is your inside your users folder. So in my case, my username is Joe. So it's uh, C users Joe. And then you would create a worldographer folder. Um, you can change this if you want to by going to change configuration folder and a file chooser will appear that you can pick a folder from and uh, you can use a different folder if for some reason uh, this this uh, that folder that structure doesn't work for you for some reason. Um, so let me get into this in a little bit of detail. If you go into uh, if you create that worldographer folder you're going to want to create features, terrain, and texture subfolders. Um, and that's where you would put those icons of, of, of each of those types. This features medieval uh, folder that I have here is something that I use. Uh, this is a technique I use so that if I, I, I don't overwhelm myself with too many options, I might create like a feature science fiction folder for all the science fiction things. In fact, I, I did. Um, it just so happens that the features uh, folder right now is the science fiction one. So when I'm ready to go back to medieval, I would rename features as features science fiction and then rename the features medieval folder as just plain features. And then I'd be all set to uh, make my uh, medieval maps again. But when I was last working with the tool, um, at least for features, I was working on some science fiction things. So you can see that here. Uh, we have a Patreon, inkwellideas.com, or patreon.com slash inkwellideas if you want to support us uh, on an ongoing basis to make improvements to the tool. As I said, we, we do make updates every month or so um, with fixes and new features, and some of those features are voted on by, by, um, by Patreon supporters, as well as uh, Patreon supporters get a set of map icons each month, and uh, last month was some science fiction stuff. So you, if you want your um, features to be buildings for a settlement map, you would put them in a structure folder. And by default, um, Worldographer assumes that the features are uh, 300 pixels um, per square or hex. Uh, so if something is, in this case, uh, 638, this is gonna be a little bit over two hexes across by default. You can add in uh, by adding in a, a, a number to the end of the file name to override that. If you want something to be much larger or smaller for some reason uh, than the default and you don't want to resize the icon itself, you can do so. Um, and if you go to Inkwell, uh, sorry, if you go to worldographer.com, there is an advanced instructions tab there. And on there is this how to easily add icons to Worldographer and it talks about that file name convention where you would add a, a, add a number if you wanted to override that setting. But, but by default, uh, 300 pixels per, per square um, is what we're expecting uh, for your images. So again, if you want it to be three squares across, you would make it 900 pixels wide. Um, likewise, for battle mat icons, uh, you've got a number of things here that you can do. Um, here I actually happen to have some spaceship stuff, so maybe I was doing some pirates in space as well. Um, so yeah, you create a battle mat uh, folder for all of your battle mat icons. Uh, your classic icons, you don't need to create a subfolder for those. That's, that's kind of the default kind of assumed, but if you wanted to create a classic one, you could create a classic subfolder. Um, going into terrain, uh, now this is uh, where, where it gets real. Um, in your terrain folder, you can have a couple of subfolders for the isometric uh, columns and isometric row icons. And then you can uh, just drop the images here. And by default, these are going to have a gray background and they're going to span 75 or 85% of, of a hex. Uh, I forget what, the, what it was exactly, but, but something along those lines. If you want to override that, then this is what you need to do to your uh, file name. It's going to look for this double dash, and then afterward is a series of numbers for different aspects uh, of your of this terrain. 
So the first number is the percentage width of a hex, and so this is going to span the entire width, which is typically what you would want for a, um, a battle mat icon, for example, or a battle mat terrain. Then you want um, the RGB, red, green, blue values as percentages. So this is 10, 10, 10 is going to be a relatively uh, you know, near black color. The next 100 here is how opaque that background color should be. So 100 would be a solid color, um, and then something close to zero is going to be almost transparent. And then the last number is that elevation default value, uh, which in the case of floor tiles, a, a one would be fine. If you're doing something like mountains for a world map, uh, we use typically like 5,000, and then your hills are 2,000s, I believe, or something along those lines. Um, and then each time you place those terrain types, it does randomize that a bit, um, but that's the, the ballpark value for those. So again, if you go to that uh, worldographer.com uh, advanced instructions tab and find the how to easily add icons, it will go over those numbers for you there as well in some detail. Um, and sometimes it's easier to read things. And then finally, we've got a textures folder here. And so this is where you can add a dash and a number to get these, um, these textures to show up at, at, and scale. Um, uh, again, so it's a, a 300. In this case, there's a 300 um, uh, pixel. Um, the, the data model, I should say, is, is based on a 300 pixel per, per tile or per hex. Um, uh, 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 perspective. So if 1500 is going to span five hexes or tiles. So that I hope and gives you an overview and a good uh, good bit of detail on how to configure Worldographer, or configure images in Worldographer, how to add them into Worldographer in three different ways. Again, that's by going to the add custom uh, terrain features and textures or configure terrain features and textures or to use the configuration folder and to set that up with the proper subfolders and automatically um, have it automatically add them to your to the system so that you don't have to add it each time you eat, add those icons each time you start Worldographer. Uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, your support and I hope the tool allows you to make some great maps. Thanks.